Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries. And this week we are in John chapter 6 verse 45. The last verse 44, he said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. All right? No one can come to Jesus Christ unless the Father draws you. This is what makes Christianity different than any other religion. Any other religion like Buddhism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Buddhism, all the other stuff out there, you can choose, but you cannot choose to be a Christian. God has, has to draw you. If you come to him, it's because God has drawn you. Nobody comes to the Father, right? Except God draws you. So it isn't up to people to be saved, it's up to God to save you. This is election, you know, God has chosen all he's going to save. And after they come to him, I will raise him up in the last day. At the end of 44, it's a promise. God, Jesus Christ himself will raise you up in the last day. We'll pick it up at 45. It is written in the prophets. And they shall all be taught of God. Now look at this. Shouldn't have been hard for the Jews to hear this. He said, even in the Old Testament, it says they shall all be taught by God. Everybody who knows anything about God has had their, their mind open and drawn by God. God is the one who chooses. God is the one who saves. God is the one who draws. We tell the message. We cannot save people. So Christian out there, stop trying to save people. Tell them the message and leave it between them and the Lord. So they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. See, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to Jesus Christ. If you're not learned by God or taught by God, You'll never come to Christ. Nobody can't come to Christ. You know, the Bible teaches we're all dead in our trespasses and sins, and that means exactly that. You're dead. You cannot, you're spiritually dead. You cannot come to Christ on your own. You have to be drawn from God and learn from God. And then they come. You know, it wasn't hard for me to believe this because I know God drew me when I was saved. I wasn't looking for him when I was saved. 46, not that anyone has seen the Father. Jesus said not that anyone has seen the Father, right? Nobody has seen the Father. Except the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. So Jesus right here said nobody's seen God except him. He's the one who's from God. Jesus Christ himself has been in heaven. He's seen the Father. He knows. So you should be listening to him. You know, people mock Christ and they make fun of him, but he's the one who is the son of God. He's been in heaven. He's seen God. He knows God. So listen to him. You know, it isn't an option not to listen to Christ. It's a command to believe the gospel. You know, most American Christianity, you know, they opt out. Oh, I'll just come to him later. Well, first off, you don't come to him when you choose. Remember, God has to draw you. If you are being drawn by God, then do not reject him. Hebrews has a lot of warnings out. Those who trample the blood of Christ, there's no longer a sacrifice left for you. So don't reject him. 47, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. And there you go. You know, John 3, 16. People bring up John 6, 3 when you start talking about election. It goes, no, God didn't just choose some. He said, whoever believes will be saved. And that's true. But John 3, 16 is not a statement for election or against it or for it. It's just a statement. It's saying, for God so loved the world, okay, that anyone who believes shall not perish but have eternal life. It's just quantifying who who's anybody who believes does have eternal life, but only only the ones that are drawn by God to Christ will believe. So them are the only ones that John three sixteen is talking about. It's not a non election statement or a statement against election. Here's a promise: truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life, and that's something you got to believe. Forty eight: I am the bread of life. Now Jesus isn't saying he's a loaf of bread. He's saying you gotta feed on him, you gotta you gotta take him spiritually, you gotta believe in him. It's just used metaphorically spiritually about him. I am the bread of life. Not a loaf of bread, but the bread of life. He can give you life. 49. Your fathers ate man in the wilderness and they died. And that's a true statement. God fed him in the wilderness, bread rained from heaven, they picked it up and they ate it, but eventually they died. Now you come to Christ and eat his bread digest, you know, the gospel and faith in him, you will never die. You'll live eternally. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you have eternal life to anyone who believes. 50, this is the bread. Now he's trying to explain the bread. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven. 
so that one may eat of it and not die. So what's the bread that comes out of heaven? Jesus Christ. You eat of him, you believe in the one he sent, you will never die. You're not going to die. You physically will die, but you won't spiritually. Again, when he talks about, when he likens himself to something, he's talking spiritually. He's the bread that comes out of heaven. You're going to physically die, but you will not spiritually die, because this is talking spiritual here, not physical. Uh, 51. I am the living bread that comes down out of heaven. See, he's the living bread. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I give for the... For the life of the world is my flesh. Okay? Here's the bread he gives. He died on the cross. He gives your, he's given his life for yours. I'll talk about myself, for example. He gave his flesh for me. Because when he died on the cross, he took my sins off of me. And onto, God took my sins off of me and onto him and punished him. And took his righteousness and gave it to me. Now, I didn't do nothing to deserve it. I didn't do nothing to get it. Out of grace, he... He made that exchange. Now I'm sinless because of what Christ did. But I have ate, eaten, eaten that flesh that come out of heaven. I've digested it. Spiritually speaking. 52. And the Jews began to argue with one another saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They missed the whole point because they were spiritually dead. Again, nobody can come to Christ unless the Father who sent me draws you. You cannot come to Christ unless God opens your mind and draws you to him. And these people were spiritually blind. He wasn't talking about his actual flesh. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. Okay, he's repeating the same thing. Now, the Catholic Church believes... The bread and the wine actually turn into his body and his blood. When you eat it, it actually turns into his flesh. And that's ridiculous. That's not what Jesus is saying here. Again, this is before communion, so this has nothing to do with communion. If you think eating a piece of bread or drinking a little bit of wine, you think that act can make you holy, anything outward can make you holy, then you don't know the Lord. You can, drink, you can eat all the bread you want and drink all the wine you want. It will not take away sin. Only Jesus Christ's life, which he was talking about. The bread is his life. And spiritually speaking, it wasn't talking his actual bread. <laughs> He's talking about spiritually speaking. You have to believe in him. Again, eating a piece of bread doesn't turn into his flesh. That would be cannibalism. The Bible condemns cannibalism. Even the Lord's. And when the Lord instituted... Communion, was he eating himself? No, he was eating a bread. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So careful on what you think saves you or takes away your sin. Because if you think wine and bread does, you do not know the Lord. You are way off base. So they didn't understand. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat, he's saying, unless you eat of the flesh, meaning spiritually, and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves, meaning not eternal life. 54, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. This is where the Catholic Church again gets it. If you eat his flesh, drink his blood, you have eternal life. This is one of the, how they think they get eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Again, spiritually speaking. 55, for my flesh is the true food and my blood is the true drink. You know, spiritually dead people don't understand this. And I'm afraid of, you know, a lot of... If a priest was saved... He wouldn't be in the Catholic Church. And I'm afraid that people in the Catholic Church don't know the true God, have not taken the spiritual bread, they've, they've, they've opted out and taken the physical bread and thinking that saves you, and then they, then they never repent, they, know, they live the same life they always did, and the priest says your sins are absolved, you know, and it gets into a whole convoluted mess. 50 said, he who eats my flesh, drinks my blood, abides in me, and I am him. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, that means spiritually, abides in me, and I am him. You know, when you come to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, right? When you have faith in him, when Jesus Christ forgives you of your sins, you have, you have now have the Holy Spirit inside you. And Paul said, it's not I that live, but Christ in me. So Christ is in you. This is what he means. He eats my flesh, drinks my blood spiritually, abide in him, and I in him. Jesus, listen, when you come to Christ, Jesus lives in you, and he lives through you. 
As, as the living Father sent me, now this is God the Father, Jehovah sent Christ, and I, I live because of the Father. So he who eats me, he also will live because of me. You know, if you take Jesus Christ spiritually, you're going to live because of him. Spiritually speaking, you're going to become alive. That true bed, you'll become alive, you eternal life. You know, eternal, the definition of eternal life is not a length of days. It's a, it's a relationship, right? Eternal life is this, to, come, to know the one and only true God, to come to a knowledge of the one and only true God. That's eternal life. 58, this is the bread which come down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died. Okay, here he distinguished it. He said, this is the bread, meaning him, come out of heaven. Not like your fathers ate. It's not physical bread that came out of heaven. And then they died. He who eats his bread will live forever. So this is different. Again, eternal life. If you come into the knowledge of the one and only true God, then you have eternal life. There's people that go, you know, they get baptized, they have communion, they think all that junk saves you. Baptism is important, it's a command, but it does not save you. Communion is important, but it does not save you. There's a lot of stuff. People go to church and they think that saves them. That It's important to go to church, but that doesn't save you. There's people that are going to live forever when you come to the knowledge, when you come into relationship with the one and only true God. 59, these things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. <laughs> the Jews were all confused now. They still thought he was talking about regular bread. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a difficult statement, and who can listen to it? Okay, now Jesus had a lot of other disciples other than the 12 with him. He had a lot of other ones with him. And most of them are now confused and said, this is too hard for me. And this is where a lot of people say, I don't want this. They turn tail and leave. But Jesus, conscious that his disciples grumbled at this, said to them, does this cause you to stumble? 62. What then if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Okay? He said, if this cause you stumble, what are you going to do when you're seeing me raised from the dead, right? And go back to the heaven, to the Father in heaven. 63. It is the Spirit who gives life, right? It isn't anything. It isn't bread. It isn't wine. It isn't baptism. It isn't church. It isn't anything else that gives life. It's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that gives you life. Right? John 3, all the Spirit is like the wind. It goes wherever it wants to go, and you don't know who he's going to save. And he comes in and saves you. The Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. Okay? There's nothing in the flesh you can do to, to make yourself better to God. You can't pay for your own sins. People try to do better and do good and do more good works and try to pay their debt, and that's a debt you cannot pay. If you sin once, it's a debt you cannot pay. So the flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are of life. See, this is where it takes this whole section when he's talking about the bread, the true bread. He said the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. It's Everything he spoke to you is about the spirit, not about actual bread and wine. You know, people have got to put this stuff in context. Catholic Church gets a whole doctrine out of this without taking the last statement that he made about these words of spirit. They're spiritual. 64, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. Okay, now Jesus, this is another part of Jesus Christ. You can look around and there's, there's false, there's false dis, you know, people in every church that claim to know, to know God and to know Jesus Christ and follow him. But Jesus knows who's, who's really his followers. In Matthew seven twenty one, he said, some of you will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, you know, and he's going to say, I don't know you. So Jesus knows who are his. And if you're a true child of God, you can rest in the fact that Jesus knows you personally and will walk you through that valley of the shadow of death and take you into heaven. Friend, if you die without Jesus Christ, when you're on your deathbed, you are in trouble. If you die without the Lord, there's no coming back. You are in trouble. It's just you and God. When I die, and I got to speak for myself here, when I die... There's a mediator between me and God. My sins are forgiven and that mediator, I got a high priest that intercedes for me forever. If you don't have that high priest and the mediator, you are in a lot of trouble. 65, he was saying this, and he was saying, for this reason I have said to you that no one, and he reverts back to no one can come to me unless it has been granted him from the Father. This is election. 
He said all these words about the bread coming, bread coming out of heaven, you know, and eat my flesh, drink my blood. And he said they're all spirit, from the spirit, spiritual words. And then he, he looked around, he knew who didn't believe. There's a lot of disciples there. There's a lot of people there who didn't believe in him. And then he ends it up saying, for this is the reason I've said to you. And he said it plainly that no one, this is, this, I don't understand why people have such a hard time with election. It says it right here, no one can come to me, Jesus, unless it has been granted, meaning granted to him from the Father. If God draws you, you'll be saved. If God doesn't draw you, you won't be saved. I don't understand why it's so hard. It's not that it's hard to understand. It's people have such a hard time with it. They just cannot accept his words. And this is where people push out the true Jesus Christ and bring in a false one. Because people bring in the false one where it's that Jesus that he bounces kids on their knees and he's the loving Jesus that doesn't have anything ever bad to say. And that's a false Christ. And that Christ cannot save you. So listen, friend. I hope you, and Christian, I hope you take away from this that, that no one can come to me unless it's granted him by the Father. If you understand that, it makes uh, evangelism and when you tell the gospel a lot easier because tell the gospel and leave it up to the Lord. Don't try to bring people in. Don't try to save people. It makes it a lot less stressful. All right, I think we'll stop there at 65. We'll start off at 66. What can you learn from this? Well, Jesus is a true bread from heaven. If you accept him and trust in him, you'll have eternal life. That true bread that comes in, he gives you life, the eternal life. Everyone who has eternal life knows they have it because the Holy Spirit's inside bearing witness with their spirit that they are a child of God. So rest in that fat, Christian. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.